Hello, my fellow travelers, adventurers, and scholars. I am Basil Not the Herb, and I am a massive fan of Remnant from the Ashes. I've beaten the main stories of the base game and the DLCs, I've run several adventures to source weapons and new experiences, and I plan to stream more of the game and run it with friends and randos because Remnant from the Ashes is a fantastic first attempt of guns, loot, and Soulsborne logic coming together. Surviving a post-apocalyptic world where science and magic become harder and harder to separate, while holding on to the old tools of our world's strength and modifying them with the remnants of fallen enemies, whilst ourselves being cut from the fabric of time, an anomaly, a menace, an undying hope. Okay, clearly I have a sweet sweaty crush on the game, and it's why I want to spend today gushing about what the devs have been working on and what about that I'm so excited about, how well the ads have done to promote the game in ways even bigger titles wish they could do, or we wish they could do, and also talk about the few things about this promotion that definitely itches wrong. At the time, 2019, FTA was one of the first games to take the Dark Souls essence of difficulty and respawning mechanics in a different direction that wasn't just a blatant copy. You still have checkpoints that remain both a help and a hindrance to your progress depending on how far along you got before you died, generally because it respawns all the enemies in that same area, though you do get your full ammo and your powers back, which are in this game called mods. On top of that, you don't lose a lot of the resources. You actually keep all the loot that you garnered. You just have to get through that brick wall of enemies again to actually continue into the next facet of the game. Still, that wouldn't have been enough to pull folks into the first title if it was just slightly easier souls born with guns. Really, Remnant's biggest pull is how, even in the first game, going through a linear story, you and your buddy could experience different bosses and weapons and different paths to walk on the same adventure. Incentivizing people to play together, experience each other's own stories and any major differences while still gaining loot all together and still really being able to develop when you go back to your world, maybe bring your friends with you. The shooting was solid, the skills and gear allow you to strive for a specific way of play, and the weapons could get goofy, and the abilities... Oh, some of those abilities. But it wasn't perfect. Too many mobs, clearly a more favored or unbalanced meta with certain gears and skills, really incentivizing, that's my favorite word of the day. Maybe not what they want to play, but what almost feels like the best way to beat the game. Plus, there were quite a few connection issues on launch, and frankly an experience that, while fun playing solo, is exceedingly more fun and almost easier when you do co-op. Oh, and the whole no respecting your character until you either start a new game or beat the first boss of the main title. But enough of the first title, what's Remnant 2 doing? What is it going to provide the first game couldn't? Well, it turns out a lot, because, oh boy, a majority of this game carries over from accessory concepts, skills, weapons, powers, which again are mods, but armors are just one part fashion and one part comfort of movement instead of being a whole other set of skills. You have more accessories to boost a specific way of wanting to play, archetypes that give you an additional bonuses, and really hyper-focus on abilities, skills, and active powers that really makes you feel like a badass in your own specific way, the ability to cross-class those archetypes, more variations of the story and bosses, more weapon choice, less reliance on needing to run meta, and the ability to respect if you don't like what you built. Put this in my mouth. And if you think all of that is cool, just wait till I get to gush about how the ad campaign's been. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! No, I'm, I'm serious, guys. I'm not there at Game Fest to really be able to check the game out myself or do any of the major previews. I'm just watching the updates like the rest of you. But at the same time, I think that proves more that you kind of have to hear me out on this, that the advertising mechanic of how they've been feeding us information has been consistent and a really good sign that the dev team were allowed to do their job without a lot of oversight. 
overall, when it comes to the content that we've seen, it's more of what I already wanted. It fixes a couple issues that I already had with the first game. And really, the most controversial change is that the armor is not going to give you massive skill bonuses. But I like that as someone who really likes playing around with fashion in games more than just having armor have to be so specific. Especially since the archetypes are already channeling very specific ways of play. Seriously, go watch the archetype videos and all the different ads and then come back to this video and you might understand what I'm talking about. But for now, to focus on the marketing tactic, the biggest thing that I think you can infer from this is that by the time we actually knew Remnant 2 was even being worked on, by the time we even knew the game had a release date, it really feels like the dev team had plenty of time to work on it. Just think about it this way. We don't hear or know anything about... Remnant 2 until December of last year, about six months ago by the point of this video, showing us a glimpse of the new worlds and armors and powers without really giving any details that Remnant 2 was eventually going to become and that it was alive and it was actual gameplay. Then, three months later, we get the first glimpse of the archetype system, custom class standards replacing and formatting the way we play Remnant for the better, covering a lot of slow pacing issues from the first game, the fact that we can run a lot more when out of combat, then we get monster shorts showing off creatures in the worlds along with more of the archetypes, dev interviews, live streams, story and location trailers, until finally here at the recent Summer Game Fest, the announcement of the release date. A time hinted only just a couple months back as summer of 2023. I understand that the game could still be junk. It's not out yet. Things can still go heavily wrong. And a good marketing campaign hasn't always been a great sign the game is ready to go. But if this game launches at even a portion of what we are being promised, we're still getting a sequel that expands upon the first in such a way that fans alone will be satisfied and be more than willing to drag new fans kicking and screaming into it. But with love. Even if the game falls flat, this timing and pacing of advertisement should be praised and become the new standard of way more games. Heck, the other games in Summer Games Fest are showing that they're already doing something like that. MK1, a reimagining of the Mortal Kombat timeline, got announced a few months back, and now we know that it's going to be coming in September. But until recently, we didn't have a lot of information or even know the game was coming out. This is just proving more that shutting the hell up and letting the team work and managing your budget behind closed doors until you have something to show is the best bet and really the only way to show off and hype up your game. It's at this point that I break down in greater detail in the script about why this works, but honestly, it's not that difficult to, to show it. They didn't, they didn't announce that the game even existed until a couple months back, and since then they've been drip-feeding information more and more and more until finally they dropped the release date. But up until that point, a lot of those advertisements only had that it was coming out in summer 2023, and even before that, it didn't even have those. It was just showing the information giving the dev team time to really finalize the last major bits of the game. They paced themselves. They clearly paced themselves. Most other companies don't have this kind of patience and don't have this willingness to be this calm shortly after an announcement a game even exists. You have too many games, and you can insert any of them right here, that just drop the ball on this so many times. Cyberpunk, Beyond Good and Evil 2, Final Fantasy XV, Kingdom Hearts 3, Skull and Bones. These are examples of games that either aren't out, aren't coming out, or games that took forever to come out that they aren't even the same thing of what they originally advertised. Just, this is awfully so an anomaly to have a game be announced, and then not even take a year to come out. And it's really something that needs to be the standard because the hype is here. The desire is here. Maybe not as big as something like Starfield or any of the other major titles like Mortal Kombat, but people are able to see it and experience it rather than trying to wait forever for a game to come out. Even fans don't even know if they want until they actually got info, and that's what Remnant did. So we've got great ads, which give off a really good impression that the dev team had plenty of time to make their game, and because of it, we're seeing content and trailers and dev talks that really make a game look like it's gonna be at least a little bit close to how much they're hyping it. However, as I said earlier, I do have a criticism. 
and it's about the separate editions of the game. 50 bucks for the base game? That's pretty good. That's actually cheaper than even games back in my heyday of being a young man. $70 for DLC and early access? A bit pricey, but I can definitely see the bundle's worth. Surely the $60 price just lets you have the early access alone, right? Don't be like this. This is disgusting. If I could kill this, I would. Daddy, chill. But legally, I can't. But I have thought about it. For a game I just gushed on about having player choice and freedom and flexibility on how you want to run it, it's really ridiculous that the pricing point is so rigid and greedy. And obviously it's greed and bad gaming practices, but if the ads were not so good and the dev team didn't have such a grand scale of an adventure before us, it, I probably would just be boycotting the game. At this point, the $70 for me is worth the price, but it's not going to be worth that price for everybody. There's plenty of people who just want the base game, but could probably have been convinced to spend an extra $10 to just play the game a couple days early. Instead, you have armor unlocks and resource bonuses for 10 friggin' dollars more? No, the release early should be $10 more, and the $20 extra should be the DLC bundle. That makes the most sense. That's a better deal than just getting content you're already going to unlock playing the game. This is a scam. This is just blatantly a scam. And to dial it back a bit, some people might be commenting at this point, dude, it's just a video game. It's not that serious. And shut up. This is at a point where we're not talking about how cool a game is. We're talking about how someone, developer-wise, publisher-wise, were able to get a lot of attention and had so much good faith going forward, but now I gotta call it into question. Not so much that the game's gonna be bad, but if they're willing to scam you out of your money and not really offer you a good deal, what else might actually be in there? This wouldn't be the first time that any company or dev team would ever say no microtransactions, pay to win services, and sure enough, they either were found to be lying or they just went back on what they were going to do. And yes, to make this clear, I am going to get the $70 bundle. No, I'm not calling it by its government name because that is a bundle that's worth it to me. Damn the armor and damn the resources, but having the three-day early access and the DLC bundle, that is worth it to someone who tries to do content creation as a hobby. Not everybody's going to have that 70 bucks to burn, especially since your base price is a very reasonable 50 Like, this is stupid. It's such a slap and, and or spit in the face, whatever turns you on more or less. To the players who were really digging the vibe and the entire mentality that this game and these advertisements were putting forward. The only thing I can really add to this is that while I want everyone to still be excited for a game, I'm elated is getting a sequel, well, goes to show how good cult followings can be. I still want the video game industry, and more importantly, people, to be treated with some level of intelligence and respect. There's no going back on what they've done, but I feel like we should make more of a stink about this. I feel like Gunfire Games, well, specifically the higher-ups, or more likely Gearbox, the publisher, need to step back and really think, what the hell are you guys doing? Especially you, Gearbox. You don't exactly have the most flawless record, development, publishing, or PR-wise. But that's my two cents. My name is Basil Not The Herb, and I thank you all for letting me fixate on video games and just screech into the void. I hope you guys had a good time here. I hope you're looking forward to Remnant 2, regardless of the BS pricing scam. And I would like to hear your comments below about what you're excited for, what you're still hesitant on, have the advertisements really pulled you in, or have certain business practices really just made you lean back a little bit like it did me. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time for whatever video game I get fixated on next. <laughs>